What's up guys, Spin Firearms here, and it's been a couple days since I've owned the Beretta APX Carry A1. Um, and it's also been a couple days since I first shot it and put out that other video. So my opinion has honestly changed. I'm going to talk a little bit about why. And is this a, a great option for everyday carry? In my opinion, I just don't think it is. But is it a reasonable firearm for everyday carry? If it's reliable, yes. And we're going to touch on that and some things that I've done. Someone actually put in the comments that if you go through 800 to 1300 rounds through it the trigger changes and becomes very smooth and nice and you know what i did i sat on my couch dry firing it like this obviously we're cleared but this is all i did so that's all i did and so i estimate that i've done that now about probably a thousand to fifteen hundred times somewhere in that range and my finger got really tired, but you're also learning and gaining strength in that finger for shooting, right? For mag dumping, that whole sort of thing. So it's actually not a bad practice to do, but also what did it do? It loosened up that trigger. It made that trigger a little bit better than it was, right? So it's a lot cleaner, crisper. A lot of that grit actually went away, which I'm pretty amazed by. Before there wasn't a defined wall, it was sort of just spongy. It's still a little spongy, which is just the weight from it. But it's actually a little bit better, which is very surprising. So that's a lot of firearms are like that when they're budget. Um, just because tolerances are a little off. They're made a little bit cheaper, less quality control. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons for it. So I did that and the firearm changed a little bit. But there are other reasons why I don't think the, this is the greatest. One is I realized I can't even mount an optic on this. Um, you need to order special plates from Beretta. So this being $220, it, um, with only one mag, I already ordered a backup mag. I ordered the six rounder. That cost me $35. So we're now up to $255 for this pickup. If I order the optics plate, we're sitting at around $300. And there's a lot better options for $300, especially with how long this thing is. It's sort of deceiving right now, but I'm actually carrying a shield 2.0. I just put the safety on for you guys so no one complains. And look, 8 plus 1 on the right, 8 plus 1 on the left. And the shields are very, um, very long for capacity wise. And look at that, it beats the Beretta. And if you can imagine, Right here is where it sits, six plus one. So it's sort of ridiculous how long this thing is. But one of the things that attributes to that is what someone did point out, it's built like an absolute tank. This is built like a brick. It has these big, strong, heavy rails that basically go up the, go through the whole entire frame. So this handgun, you know, is absolutely built to last, or last. Everything's polished on the inside. It's actually pretty amazing. They did a really good job for the price on the internal so that is one of the benefits but overall even with the trigger getting better there are better handguns for the price in my opinion like i said that trigger actually got much better very interesting let's start comparing it to things in its class beretta bp9 cc that's eight plus one but look how thin that is so basically same capacity and thinness it still beats it you see that so that's the beretta bp9 or sorry the bursa bp9 cc check out this trigger you want to see a trigger about three pounds All right. absolutely ridiculous next up we'll go ruger uh lc9s shooting these two back to back was ridiculous um because you realize how nice the lc9s is to shoot i get that it's a little outdated seven plus one on the right eight plus one on the left i get that it's a little outdated um but this is a shooter hands down a shooter if they made a double stack lc9s you know we'd be talking a whole different ball game now what's interesting is People say this is a terrible handgun for concealed carry because it's only 6 plus 1. But you're shooting 45 GP, which basically every round is 450 plus foot-pounds of energy coming out of the short barrel. Look at that. 6 plus 1 on the right, 8 plus 1 on the left. Pretty interesting. Now, right here, 13 plus 1 out of the Masada Slim versus 8 plus 1 on the left. So that has an extra 5 rounds. And it's about $150 more. And you can direct mount an optic to that. This you have to order plates right here. This is interesting. The Stoger STR9 Micro Compact, $350. This is the lower base model. 11 plus 1 versus 8 plus 1 on the left. So my point is for the length, for the trigger, having to break it in that much, all this stuff, the optics plate that you have to order separately, the magazines that are sold out of the six rounders, I had to buy it on eBay. There's a lot of things going for other handguns over this. Check that out. That's 11 plus 1 on the right, 8 plus 1 on the left, and yes, it's 11 plus 1 because it's an OEM Glock mag, but this base plate has allowed me to get an extra round snuck into it. 
Let's go right here. Glock 33, chamber and 357 SIG. I would say get this all day over. It's not even close. 9 plus 1 on the right of 357 SIG versus 8 plus 1 on the left. Look at that. Look at the grip difference. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I think I get why they built it up because this is a chassis system that you can swap from frame to frame. But you guys, it's just, it's so tall for what it is. It's very hard to justify. Here's a 6 plus 1 Glock 42 of 380 versus 8 plus 1 on the left. I mean, just look at that. And I have an 8 round mag for my Glock 42. And that will sit not even at the end of the Beretta frame. So you got you got to think like that. And then, like I said, here's the shield. I think it's a much better optic. I better, I'll keep it on for you guys. But then we got to turn that off so I don't forget. Look at that. And I shot these two back to back in my review. You guys can watch my video from the other day. Me shooting these live. The shield is just a, a great shooter. Even though I do have to admit, this thing is very smooth with the recoil. But one thing about it is if you don't carry with an optic, you are stuck with these sights. You can change the front sight, but you can't change the rear sights. They're part of the optics plate. So that's another loss. I don't understand Beretta's thinking behind that. It's just a complete... Like, if I was in that room, I'd be yelling at everyone. <laughs> that's a shield plus on the right. That's going to be the 13 round max. So 13 plus 1, shorter than the 8 plus 1. And you can get a shield plus for 350 So for $100 more. And you get the backup mag and blah, 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 blah. Right? And that is the base model. So that's why it's so cheap. Right here. Heck of a deal. You see these brand new, or sorry, used, basically new, but still sold as used for, you know, 250 300 SR9C from Ruger. That's 10 plus 1. Versus 8 plus 1 on the left. I'm not saying the Beretta is a bad gun and then you can't use it for self-defense or you can't trust your life with it because it did. It hasn't done me wrong. It ate gold dots like it was nothing. Very minimal recoil. The trigger has broken in. All the, you know, everything functions on it really well. Great texturing. You know, the size is just what gets me, you know, because it's, this section is so tall right here, that pushed everything down. If they had this shrunk up and the slide shrunk up a little bit, now we're talking. Now you're competing with the shields and, you know, other options like that. Check out this ridiculous comparison. 13 plus 1, a 30 super carry. This is a $250 handgun. $250 shield. 13 plus 1 on the right. 8 plus 1 on the left. It has a total of 5 rounds more. Just ridiculous. One thing people did mention is it has that long, heavy, you know, trigger pull, which has now gotten a lot better. But the reason for that is for pocket carry, deep concealment, jacket carry, front pocket, you know, stuff like that, which I get. But at the same time, there's stuff like the Ruger LC9S and, you know, there's CZP 10Ms and stuff like that that are a little bit shorter with more capacity and have that trigger pull. So let's check this out. Oh yeah, and if you guys are looking for uh, holsters, Blacksmith Tactical, code SPN for 10% off. Awesome clips, awesome claws, awesome wedges, and this is a taco holster. So pretty cool. 15 plus one on the right, which is, look at that. 15 plus one on the right versus eight plus one on the left. And I get it's a Beretta, but the, the reliability of the Hellcat is the exact same. You're gonna have zero issues with that Hellcat. Look at that, just overall smaller, 15 plus one, seven extra rounds in, you know, basically the same exact size handgun. The slide's even thicker on the Beretta. It's just, that's where you're losing people. And I get they put a lot of time and effort into building something, but they didn't do it right. They lost. Therefore, Beretta does not have a really good option out there for concealed carry. Right, let's see what this is. I think that's the 15 round mag. 15 round mag, look at this. For the Canik, but the MC9, 15 plus one on the right. 8 plus 1 on the left. I mean, it just destroys it. The grip zone. The grip zone. 13 plus 1. Versus 8 plus 1. Yes, the grip zone. Mod 2. Springfield Armory. 13 plus 1 on the right. 8 plus 1 on the left. I get it's thinner. Blah, blah, blah. I get that. Right here. MMP 40C. I paid like 300 for this. 285, whatever it was. Used. 10 plus 1 of 40 versus 8 plus 1 of 9 on the left. Look at that. Just ridiculous. I get it's thicker. I get it's heavier. And they play different roles. But you get the point I'm making. 12 plus 1 on the right versus 8 plus 1 on the left. Smith & Wesson M&P Subcompact 2.0. Just ridiculous. Uh, CZ P10S. 12 plus 1 on the right versus 8 plus 1 on the left. Just ridiculous. It's just capacity wise, there's no excuse. 
10 plus 1 out of the Glock 28 of 380. Like, look at that. 10 plus 1 on the right versus, uh, it's just crazy, versus 8 plus 1 on the left. Ruger, LCP Max, I get it's also in 380. Can't beat this. This is cheaper than the Beretta ding. This is 250 bucks. Maybe 275, you know, on its worst day, right? The 75th anniversary edition. Look at that. 10 plus 1 on the right. Look how thin it is. I get that this is the Nano, you know, reformed or, you know, revised, but it's just, it's not it. It's just not it. Will it work? Of course. If, if you carry, that's all I care about. If you have a handgun on you at all times, that's what I care about. Let's say this is just a pocket pistol you throw in your pocket when you're out with your family. I'm all for that. That's what I want to see. I want to see people carrying, carrying responsibly with a good, reliable handgun. And yes, this is a good, reliable handgun. It's just, I'm just trying to explain to you the reasons why I'm not the biggest fan of it. Also, massive trigger guard, which is actually a really good feature for if you live in a cold area for getting a gloved finger in that trigger guard, right? 10 plus 1 on the right. Glock 26. It's just going to be ridiculous again. 10 plus 1. Imagine without that base plate. Let me take the base plate out. 10 plus 1 on the right. 8 plus 1 on the left. Glock 26. You can find them used for 400 just ridiculous. I mean, just once again, another Blacksmith Tactical Holster, code SPN for 10% off. And then we'll do one last one, also in a Blacksmith Tactical Holster, one of my favorite handguns, the FN, FNS 9C, 12 plus 1, even without the base plate. So when it's like that, it's 12 plus 1. I just like the base plate for winter, getting a bigger grip on that for carry. Uh, 12 plus 1 on the right, 8 plus 1 on the left. And I got this for 275 used. And I'm the reason for all the scratches. It looked brand new when I got it. All the barrel wear, that's all me. So, unbelievable. But let's just go through one last time. What do I think about this handgun? Positives. The texturing is great. Ergos are pretty decent. Um, as a pocket pistol, it's it's a pretty good option. I'm not even going to lie with that trigger being a little bit heavier. You can throw it in a sticky holster and have no worries about it going off on its own. Um, it's going to be reliable. You know that. Um, trigger has gotten decent. Not good. Not terrible, but actually pretty decent. All Everything functions on it from the mag release, slide release, all that stuff. But I just can't get over the fact that it didn't come with optics plates. You have to specifically order it from the website, which is expensive. Um, the sights, plastic. If this drops, they're going to get sheared off. Now you have to order a new plate cover unless you're wearing a red dot. But if you run a red dot, you're not going to be carrying it in your pocket. So another positive, it does use a chassis system. But what is the chassis for? Other grip modules which only company that makes them is Beretta. So you're just going to get this in different colors, which it is what it is, right? Um, negatives, a lot. The trigger, a lot of people would look at the trigger as a negative. Um, like I said, the optics plate. The, I mean, there's just so much. The price is definitely a positive, but once you factor in buying a second mag, you're already at $250. You get that optics plate, you're now sitting at $300. And there's just so many better options, especially used handguns for $300. If it runs, it runs. If this is what you carry, continue carrying it. I'm not saying sell it by any means. I can't please everybody, and my personal opinion of this thing is it's not my favorite. I'd rather go with the LC9S if I want a single stack, or, you know, the um, EC9S, the Shield, the regular 2.0 that I got for 200 This was 225 used, obviously. But, you know, there's just better options out there that I would definitely explore if you're looking to get one. But if yours runs, and it's reliable, and you shoot with it, and it's accurate, and you've learned that trigger then do it. But it is pretty hard going from one handgun to this trigger and learning it. Because the problem is, on reset, right, you end up short stroking it, right? See how, like, your average trigger is already going to come back and reset by now, right? And it just keeps going and going, and now it's there. But, like I said, it has loosened up a lot, gotten a little bit better. So, you know, in terms of overall function of this thing it functions and it's going to run and it's beefy in the rails and the internals so this thing is actually built like a brick and you know can take an ab some beating and abuse so that's definitely a positive it does have for it for me this would be a backup truck gun a firearm my mom can use when she's here and we go to the range uh you know stuff like that that's what i would use for pocket carry deep concealment potential backup backpack gun whatever the case may be just something that I don't care so much about because of its price point and I can abuse it a little bit. But the problem with that is you can't really abuse it because it's got plastic crappy sights on it. So it is what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.